Hi, my name is Alan McGinley. I'm an ecosystem architect here at Venify. This demo attempts to answer a question you may encounter in the enterprise. If you're using Microsoft Teams alongside Venify TLS Protect for Kubernetes, often abbreviated to TLSPK, how can you be notified that an observed machine identity requires your attention? Let's imagine you have 100 Kubernetes clusters, each maintaining 100 machine identities. In this case, TLSPK is the perfect observability tool for the task. That said, when everything's running smoothly, the contents of the dashboard are unspectacular, so perhaps you don't want it front and center at all times. To efficiently protect against outages, you need a mechanism to draw your attention back to the dashboard when a noteworthy event occurs. That's what TLSPK notifications are all about. But you don't need to be running hundreds of clusters to see TLSPK notifications in action. In this exercise, you will register just one disposable cluster within which you'll create a certificate which TLSPK deems to be unsafe or unusable. With the appropriate configuration in place, TLSPK will notify you via Microsoft Teams that a noteworthy event requiring your attention has occurred. You can follow this along with me now or follow the instructions that you see on screen. We'll start by configuring the VM. The TLSPK helper script is not the only way to build disposable Kubernetes clusters for use with TLSPK, so feel free to complete these steps with whatever tools you choose. From a terminal session on your disposable Linux VM, Download the TLSPK helper script. You then need to set a couple of environment variables for TLSPK, the user ID and the user secret. Check the documentation for how that's done. With the script in place, we can install our dependencies. The notable dependencies here are Docker and K3D. At this point, you can either restart the session or issue a command new group docker. Set up a variable to uniquely identify this cluster as your own. At this point you can create your cluster. Deploying the TLSPK agent on your cluster will cause a cluster to become registered with TLSPK. Deploy the agent as follows. After a few seconds, navigate to TLSPK to confirm your new cluster has been successfully registered. If you click through on the cluster, assuming Show System Certificates is deselected, you should see no certificates. You will observe a Configure Alerts button Keep this page open as you'll return here shortly. Back in the terminal session, install the operator. With the operator in place, you can install the operator components, including Cert Manager. Before moving on, check that Cert Manager was successfully installed. We can see we have one instance ready. In Microsoft Teams, assume that the team you wish to use already exists. Click the ellipsis button next to the team and add channel. Provide a channel name and click add. Click the ellipsis button next to your channel and choose connectors. Search for the word webhook and click configure. Provide a name for the webhook and click create. Copy the URL for the webhook and click done. And close the window. Your connector is now ready in Microsoft Teams. Head back over to TLSPK to configure your alert. In the alerts configuration dialog, select Microsoft Teams as the integration type. Provide a name for your new receiver and paste in the URL from Microsoft Teams. Click Create to complete the configuration. 
There are a variety of certificate states which TLSPK categorizes as high risk or error states. In order to test the Microsoft Teams integration you set up, you can create a single invalid cert manager certificate that references a non-existent cert manager issuer. Navigate to the Microsoft Teams channel you created earlier and within about one minute you will see an alert regarding the certificate you just created. Each alert in Microsoft Teams is accompanied by a view link, taking the user directly to the high risk certificate as reported in TLSPK. Click the view link and keep the page open as we complete the next step. You can see here that the certificate is considered unusable. Obviously the intention is to address each alert and this one is no exception. The certificate entered an error state in TLSPK because the self-signed cluster issuer did not exist when the certificate was created. Let's introduce the missing issuer by making an adjustment to the TLSPK installation manifest. When a desired state is not achievable in Kubernetes it will continue to retry. With the missing issuer now in place, the Kubernetes secret for the certificate will be issued and after about one minute the error state shown in TLSPK will be rescinded. The example you just saw was simple in the extreme. One cluster with one certificate issued one way and only one failure mode. Imagine scaling this up to dozens of clusters which may not even use Cert Manager yet. Imagine hundreds of undocumented certificates built without modern guardrails and rapidly expiring. Benefit TLS Protect for Kubernetes provides the capabilities needed to enable effective machine identity management for Kubernetes clusters in the enterprise. So look out for more demos like this, revealing how effective machine identity management can accelerate your cloud native development and prevent application outages or security breaches. Thank you very much.